Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Alexander Dalzal, and I've been with Rare Charitable Research Reserve since um, late May 2023 this year in my role as the new conservation scientist. But I have been doing research on Rare's lands since 2017 as part of my master's degree and also my ongoing PhD work at the University of Guelph. I have to say that I absolutely love this organization and I feel blessed to be part of its growth, both in size and also in awareness of it. So thank you for having me. I'm really excited to talk to you today about our long-term monitoring programs, but also the many opportunities we have for involvement. So before I begin, I just want to offer gratitude and acknowledgement to the original stewards of the land, the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and neutral peoples for which archaeological evidence has been found at Rare, dating back 10,000 plus years. We at Rare acknowledge that the lands we live on, work on, and derive benefit from were taken away from the original stewards. And so it's our goal to restore that connection and to work towards building ethical, reciprocal relationships with the local First Nations of the land. So for those of you who don't know Rare, Rare is located at the junction of the Speed and Grand River within the Waterloo region. So here's a map showing the majority of our sites in Cambridge, Ontario. Overall, Rare has 1,200 plus acres of preserved land surrounded by expanding urban development. Rare is the largest non-governmental owned urban green space in Canada. Um, so this green space in Cambridge is larger than Central Park in New York City and Stanley Park in BC. Rare was founded in 2001 with the goal to steward its sites and ecosystems intact in perpetuity for the community to enjoy forever in a natural state. Today, I want you to get to know Rare a bit more. So I wanna highlight three long-term monitoring programs, but also speak to the many opportunities we have for the community to get involved. So first off, where are we? This slide shows our facilities located in Cambridge, Ontario. So in icon one, you see our historic Lambs Inn, which was built in 1837. And this is where our main offices are located. Icon two shows the Eco Center, which is our main community hub for events and also other fundraising events that we have. So just recently we hosted the trail party where we fundraise to turn the map green. We also host our eco camp in the summer and fall for children and teens at this location. Icon three shows the Springbank Community Gardens, which is the largest community garden in Waterloo region with 110 garden plots, as well as extensive education demonstration and food bank gardens. In Cambridge alone, we have a network of eight kilometers of public trails. And in the last couple of years, we have also added properties along the Aramosa corridor, some of which also have public trails. But if you're coming to Rare, I highly recommend you come to the Deer Run Trail, which is in this light pink color, and this Osprey Loop in red. And the trail names give you a clue of what wildlife you might see when you're walking them. So now that you know where we are, let's chat a little bit about who we are. So since inception, Rare has taken part of the land on behalf of the community through the use of our three pillars, conservation, research, and education. Rare promotes the lands as a living laboratory for research, including in-house monitoring programs and partnerships with universities and other institutions um, involving citizen scientists, artists, and also indigenous peoples. Research then informs our restoration practices and our education programs through this chain of learning. RARE provides a unique opportunity for conservation and monitoring with 24 different habitat types and more than 5,000 species. The goal of RARE is to preserve its sites and their ecosystems through sustainable management, which allows for community recreation, but also protecting sensitive lands and maintaining research sites. We often involve the community in these efforts and typically have volunteer days approximately once per week during the field season. And tasks vary, but they often include invasive species removal or restoration activities. Research, and that is my department, um, include ecological monitoring programs. And these were established in 2006 with the goal of collecting baseline data and the objective of creating long-term data to observe changes over time. Monitoring of butterflies, salamanders, forest health, soils, lichen, 
and benthic invertebrates help inform land use changes, stewardship, and also our education programs at the reserve. The education department at RARE provides a space for scientific research and indigenous knowledge sharing for children of our communities. More than 8,000, oh, pardon me, 18,000 students have been through our youth environmental education programs. And this is called the Every Child Outdoors or ECO, which delivers K to 12 programs that allow students to mirror research that I do, um, our monitoring activities, um, but at a smaller scale for students and children. We also offer public community events to help inform and to also engage the community on a variety of environmental, art-based and indigenous focused topics. So let's talk about some of the main projects um, that I do as a conservation scientist at RARE. So this includes conducting long-term monitoring projects on all of our sites. So we have six programs which involve monitoring butterflies, salamanders, forest health, benthic invertebrates, lichen, and soil decay. But with respect to time, I just wanna focus on the top. Three photos referring to butterfly monitoring, salamander monitoring, and forest health monitoring, all of which occur annually. So let's begin with butterflies. This program begins May every year and ends in August, just before our next program starts in September. Butterflies were chosen for monitoring because they are extremely susceptible to environmental changes. They have short lifespans and changes can be seen through generations. Now, one of the most commonly used monitoring methods around the world is the transect walk method. This originated in Britain in the 1970s. And basically this method involves walking established routes at a uniform pace and making observations within a given radius. This method does not require extensive effort or time and it limits the disturbances to the butterfly's behavior. Butterfly monitoring has occurred at RARE since 2006 with consecutive and consistent efforts since 2010. So since 2010, we have um, established four transects here. Um, and previous to that, we only had two. So these four transects have been monitored annually at the exact same time every year. The methods are very simple. We walked a predefined transect route, record species diversity and abundance data. And at each of these numbered stops, we record any observations we see within a 10 minute sampling interval within a 10 meter radius of the observer. Now, all of our data and monitoring efforts goes to Pollard Base, which is an online system for managing butterfly monitoring programs. So here's a figure showing the number of observations by year for our monitoring program occurring from 2006 to present. And I will say that this year was an interesting year for monitoring. There were many wildfires in Northern Ontario and across the province that resulted in smoke or haze during monitoring. But you know, we still found a really good amount of observations. This year we found 46 species observed um, with 4,613 individuals cited. Comparing species abundance in the last five years, there was a 5% decline from the average abundance of 4,864 individuals. There was also a 10% decline in species richness from the average 51 um, species observed over the last five years. Overall, these numbers are not alarming and they do indicate a rather stable species richness and abundance count. So this bubble plot shows the most commonly observed, observed species of butterflies found. On the left graph, we see data from all sampling years. And on the right, we only see data from the 2023 year. So you can see from the size of the bubbles that the top five species observed this year was also the same five species we observe generally. These are the cabbage white, inordinate ringlet, little wood satyr, clouded sulfur, and common wood nymph. Now, if butterfly monitoring interests you, we have an opportunity to be a part of this monitoring effort every year. Although this event has now passed, you can plan for the future. So every July we host what is called the annual butterfly count at RARE. And we walk our transects together as a group to identify the abundance and diversity we see in one day. This typically happens the second uh, week of July, always on a Saturday with a Sunday rain date. And this year, Jade Anderson led the butterfly count. 
Um, she's a very skilled uh, lepidopterist um, and ecological monitor at RARE. She even identifies butterflies through their flight patterns. So here are some photos that Jade took during this year and also what the group found. So this one day event, we found 21 species of butterflies counting 455 individuals. The most species we saw this year, uh, the most common ones were the common wood nymph, followed by the cabbage white and then the pearl crescent. So if you would like to join us next year for this event, don't hesitate to contact me or you can also sign up via our events calendar on our website. And this is kind of what the events calendar looks like. So if you go to rarecites.org slash events calendar, we have it um, organized by the month um, and you can see on this page, any green dots means there is something available that day. And we just ask that you click on the side um, right bar here and you would register for a ticket just so we know how to staff people that day. Um, yeah, we just get a, a count of numbers. So the events are always popping up from time to time. So do check periodically. So next let's talk about salamanders. This monitoring is currently happening um, and the data for this presentation was just updated yesterday. So like butterflies, salamanders are easy to monitor and identify. They breathe through their skin, making them very um, susceptible to environmental changes. They have stable population sizes and small home ranges, which means that population fluctuations and range shifts are more likely due to environmental changes. In Ontario, there are nine species of salamanders with five species found at rare. Our monitoring efforts are specifically focused at tracking populations of lungless salamanders because they complete their life cycle on the forest floor. Therefore, they're very useful indicators for forested ecosystems. The role of salamanders in the forest ecosystem is an important one. They are fish and predators and they quickly metabolize prey, which can result in densities equaling or surpassing other vertebrate groups. These high densities provide an ample food source for predators such as snakes, rodents, and birds. Therefore, the role in transferring energy up trophic levels is invaluable. Now, the, the five salamander species found at rare are the yellow spotted, the four toed, uh, the blue spotted and the eastern redback salamander. And we even have records of the Jefferson salamander at rare. So from 2006 to current, this is the number of observed species. Um, and obviously you can see that the eastern redback number is um, the most. So this is with 97% of observations being of this species. These guys are completely terrestrial and therefore do not require ponds or vernal pools for the development. They can generally be found in moist soil under downed woody debris in mature forests. So salamander again is in full swing at rare right now. So this is just a quick overview of our methods. Monitoring started this year, August 29th, and it continues for nine weeks until October 25th. There are predefined locations of salamander boards in two high priority forests at rare. We observe biotic and abiotic conditions in the forest. Then we measure and record information about the salamanders found under those boards. So this includes data such as soil measures, forest canopy features, and definitely important information about the salamander health itself, uh, including body weight and also body measurements. So let's dive into the data. You can clearly see from this uh, figure that there's a lot of peaks and valleys in the data. Last year, 2022, was a very dry year at RARE. And you can see this was a very bad year for salamanders. This year, with monitoring only halfway completed, we've already surpassed our observations. Currently, we have a total of 144 salamanders observed compared to just the 92 observations from last year at the exact same sites. So some interesting findings include a big jump in the Eastern redback salamanders. This was an 89% increase of observations from the previous year. Excitingly, we found the most blue spotted salamanders we have ever in a single year. So we found nine observed in one forest alone. And this beats the score of three spotted, uh, three blue spotted found in a single year. This year, we also found a Jefferson dominated polyploid termed a unisexual ambistoma, which is listed as an endangered species. So that was very, very exciting to see. And I just wanna 
finish off with the last monitoring program here. And this is called vegetative sampling protocol. And this helps inform our forest health needs at RARE. So in 2018, uh, fairly recently, RARE began utilizing the vegetative sampling protocol, which I call VSP. It's got three main goals. One, to inform the presence and extent of invasive plants on the property, very important. Two, to expand knowledge regarding what plants currently exist on the property. And three, to quantify any temporal changes in vegetation and future uh, resampling. So this work is done in collaboration with the University of Toronto Faculty of Forestry under the supervision of Dr. Daniela Purick. With this program, forest plots are resampled every five years to see you know, that temporal shift in community dynamics. And this is what's called a modular approach. Um, so you can pick and choose what kind of modules you want to use in your sampling protocol. And for us at RARE, this is focused on plant abundance, tree measurements, lying deadwood, uh, subplots, and tree canopy dieback. So I won't get too into the details of it, but I will say that VSP has already proven to be extremely valuable to add to RARE's long-term monitoring program. This in-depth method of vegetative sampling has not only added new species to our property list, but has provided high quality data to support our land management work and prioritize sites for invasive species removal and restoration actions. To date, there have been over 200 non-native plant species recorded at Rare Charitable Research Reserve, of which 70 invasive species have been identified um, with this VSP sampling. So with the sampling, it helps us establish where priority sites are, um, where invasive species removal should be focused to make the best use of our very limited funding available. So data helps us create map like this. Um, and this is showing you a VSP site sampled at our cliffs and alvars habitat in 2018. So you see in this figure, there's a very intense cover of invasive species in this uh, 224 plot. Some plant species we are finding in these sites. Um, of course, we are fighting with uh, buckthorn, European buckthorn, but other plant species and ones that are shown in this um, combined map here are autumn olive, Norway maple, invasive honeysuckles, barberry, and buckthorn, uh, I will say is just a big one. So this invasive species monitoring is an uh, important facet of ongoing research and ecological monitoring at the Rare Charitable Research Reserve. So if you're interested in diving into any of this further, um, I wanna to bring to your attention that all research reports can be found on our website under the tab, what we do. Um, and then you go to research and then you can find it at research reports and publications. So now I'm gonna switch gears a bit and talk about how you can be involved in the research department at RARE. Um, so as I've mentioned before, RARE promotes its lands as a living laboratory for research. We partner with universities and other institutions to help students and professionals have access to these field sites. Since 2009, we have hosted more than 250 research projects with 200 plus peer reviewed publications from those projects. Every year we invite graduate students to apply to our Aegis Foundation Fellowship and Bursary. Every year we distribute $15,000 to students um, and this includes a $5,000 BIPOC award and a top research project of $5,000 and then up to $1,000, uh, five $1,000 bursaries. Students are eligible, pardon me, eligible to apply if they're enrolled as a graduate student in Canada or an international institution, but they need to conduct research on the Rare Charitable Research Reserve or in conjunction with Rare. So this means it could be a lit review or a meta-analysis, for example, and more remote work. Um, but the research project has to have an environmental focus or component. The next deadline for this scholarship is going to be June 11th, 2024 and field projects are eligible from May 2024 and April 2025 range. But of course, longer projects are also acceptable. Uh, we just ask that applicants submit their applications at least four weeks before their anticipated field start date. Now, if you're not a student and you also wanna conduct research at RARE, we also welcome that. 
So if you go on our website, we have a research and land use application form that you can complete anytime throughout the year. You can also contact me um, if you have any questions or want to visit a site, for example, to see our properties. Um, I'll say that we have plenty of habitats and species diversity to ask interesting ecological questions. Consider RARE also for partnerships, um, for other funding opportunities like the Libro Aero Fellowship or also my tax funding as well. So we have so many different habitats at RARE, a total of 44 listed in our environmental management plan based on ecological land classification. But here are a few to show you the size and the distance of habitat from each other. Um, so for example, you see um, these meadow, um, this meadow category here. This also includes restored tall grass prairie sites. And historically, Southern Ontario has had many square kilometers of prairie, now with only these red dots existing as remnants. So we are trying to restore and protect as much prairie habitat as we have on Rear's land um, as possible to keep this important ecosystem intact. And this is kind of how I started with RARE, uh, researching this restored tall grass prairie as part of my graduate work. But not only is researching habitats important, but also the species that use them. So at RARE, we have many species, including 241 confirmed bird species, 38 species of mammals, 21 species of herps, 900 plus species of plants, and about 35 uh, 100 plus species of insects, as well as others I have not included, such as fish, fungi, mosses, um, etc., totaling over 5,000 species inhabiting our lands. So I just want to end this presentation with another great way to get involved, and that's with our partner organizations. And one of those recent ones is the Canadian Conservation Corps Flex Program. So in a nutshell, CCC Flex is a free program for youth 18 to 30 that's community-based and flexible to fit around regular activities like school, work, and family. So by joining this program, you can attend fun events year-round um, and around your community with others that are interested in getting, getting outdoors and giving back to nature. Um, so all events are day events and primarily center around outdoor adventure and conservation service opportunities. So right now they've launched the program in British Columbia, um, two in Ontario and one in Nova Scotia. So the closest one to the Waterloo region of course is the Guelph one. And there's two ways to, to join. So either as a community conservation steward or as a community conservation champion. So stewards need only to come out to the events and you know have a fun time. But if you're interested in joining as a community champion, you can also have a hand in helping to plan and lead some of these events. And these events can include um, things at RARE. So if you're interested, do contact Luke there or Shannon. They're fabulous people to get to know. Or just visit their website, which I have at the top link there. So with that, I want to say thank you so much. Um, and please don't hesitate to get in touch. I would love to get to know um, any new community members and uh, show you around where, uh, rare sometimes. So thank you.